What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Ladies, Leans, Likes, and Lacks, MLB Streets. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. It goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here. Or a little neck of the YouTube woods. So far, so good. Uh, we've got, what, 4-1 it was Atlanta, and then it tied up 4-4. Hopefully, we can get Atlanta to score a couple of runs and get that lock across the board here. But Shohei Otani goes yard and the total bases. If you laddered those, I didn't end up laddering them. I am mad. Had a couple of smaller home run plays with him, parlayed with a couple of different other pieces. Again, I'm not normally a parlay guy, but there were a couple of offers from the NCAA tournament and other places where I just thought, mm, I'll... I'll put it together, and sure enough, Shohei Otani just goes ballistic. Two doubles, home run in his first three at-bats against my Twins. Uh, Bailey Ober had a pretty good outing, though, but uh, we're still early in the MLB season. Want you to show a little bit of caution here. We're going to be a little bit cautious here today as well, that's for sure. But talking through some spots, Christian Yelich going yard. That was a beautiful thing. Very, very useful. Uh, we're just accumulating sample size, but seeing some of the differences in batters, well, they're going to play almost every single day. Pitchers, you're going to see them second, third time through here now. So we're accumulating sample size specifically on them. Good times are going to be had by all. We'll talk about Ben MGM. Hopefully the audio a little bit better for everybody this time around. I think uh, producer Jacob and I, we figured out a couple of things here. Did the old Google search to try to figure out exactly what was going on here in the world. But I think all is well. Hopefully you're enjoying the NCAA tournament uh, here, the, the championship game here. I'm recording while it's going on. So I'm going to be uh, taking in on this little sucker here from time to time. Going to be fun times. But we've got, what, 15 MLB games, 14 NBA games. It is just madness. They're thir it's an absurd amount of basketball going on here as well. So check out NBA Lindy's here as we finish out the regular season up until Sunday, which is going to be the wildest slate of the entire year. That's for sure. Producer Jacob, though. Hi. Hello. Hopefully audio and visual. And all the things are good. Let's get to the picks. Our first game right out the get-go. We're going to be careful here. Hopefully audio is good. Casey Mize taking on Martin Perez. Martin Perez, 55.6% hard hit percentage in his two outings thus far this season. Just a 16.3% K rate. And whether it was with my twins or then the Texas Rangers at any point in his career, never been super impressed by anything he's done outside of inducing ground balls. And that stayed the same here this season. 52.8% hard hit percent, or sorry, ground ball percentage. Only a 19.4% uh, fly ball rate. But... When it does get hard, it's going for a ride now. 55.6% hard hit percentage in the first two outings. Not my favorite pitcher, that's for sure. And I mean, both of these are quote unquote winning baseball teams right now. Again, may or may not maintain. I'm going to go with won't maintain personally, but that's just me. I think that's actually where Detroit might have a little bit of value trying to mine out of this one. As you look at Detroit and you look at Casey Mize specifically, well, first off, the lineup isn't completely terrible, but Casey Mize, former number one pick here, he hasn't exactly been good, hasn't exactly been good whatsoever here this season, but it's been a 3.87 expected ERA next to a 6.23 ERA. So I think positive regression is coming. It's only been one start, it's one barrel. So far, so good in terms of like what I think he's going to be. He, look, it's plus 105 here to go up against Pittsburgh. It's nearly 70 degrees here, and I just don't ever want to be backing Martin Perez at this stage of his career without the right price. And well, this is kind of the exact opposite. Detroit, plus 105. What a time to be alive. That's really all I got for you, but it's a lean. I'm not going to be betting it more than likely. Baltimore and Boston up next and two really good pitchers. Well, a young pitcher who isn't the quality of Corbin Burns, that's for sure. But we're going to start with the Corbin Burns side of things because with Baltimore, he could be very, 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 very good. He hasn't walked a batter yet. That seems good in two starts. 182 pitches, zero. Yes, zero walks. If that maintains, well, we're going to give him a trophy. Also, he's like, Ridiculous in terms of the strikeout stuff normally. Uh, didn't show up against Kansas City by any means. Did give up just two earned there in that spot. Didn't end up factoring into the decision, but this is going to be a trade that Milwaukee might be regretting come the end of the season. That's for sure. Again, there's no salary cap in baseball, so it's just like, hey, how much do you want to spend? And I know uh, Milwaukee was being somewhat stringent there. I get it. I want Corbin Burns, that's for sure. Uh, look at the other side of this one, though. Brian Bayo. This is just going to be a lean on eight and a half purely because, well, I do think both offenses bring a lot to the table and both, both offenses should bring a lot to the lefty table. And lefty, it is harder to hit it out of uh, Fenway, out of yeah, pesky pole, which is nifty if you can wrap it around there. But 
middle right like it is really hard to hit it out of Fenway if you look at some of the numbers and look at the ballpark factors over on a place like Baseball Savant or Fangraphs or any any of your chosen sites that is for sure but Brian Bayo we know what he does he induces ground balls hasn't really gone completely nuts yet this season just 46.9 percent ground ball percentage but I expect it to go up and I also expect the strikeout stuff to eventually show up at the big league level just 19 percent thus far uh under eight and a half just a thin play, probably going to be in the outside looking in. Much better coming up here now. Michael Soroka taking on Logan Allen here. White Sox, Guardians. And I got to say, Michael Soroka, I don't know what we're going to be looking at for him going forward other than just trying to attack. And it sucks because he's already on a bad team. I would prefer you run a good team where we could get some type of uh, number uh, to be able to go bet up against him here. But he's, a, alas, probably on the worst team in baseball thus far here, the White Sox, them and the Marlins. Marlins, but the Marlins at least have pieces and they have trade chips. White Sox, I don't even think have that outside of Luis Robert. And if you trade Luis Robert, there's going to be an anarchy amongst White Sox fans. So there's that. Have fun. Enjoy. But 4.3% uh, K rate now through two starts. That is just abysmal. Again, you look through some of it and, and the, Two strikeouts now in ridiculous amount of innings. 11 innings pitched thus far. Oh, boy. Not going to be successful at the big league level with that, especially with a 41.5% hard hit percentage to go with it. That's why we're receiving a 5.81 expected ERA, which is actually on par with the 5.70 expected ERA he had last season. So, Michael Soroka, I apologize. You're going to be attackable. I'll at least touch on Logan Allen because he's a pitcher that I kind of like. Ground ball rate. Ground ball rate's been nifty, 54.3% thus far uh, for him in two starts, 19.1% K rate. We got room for that one to grow considering last season, 22.2%. But the Southpaw, uh, hard to back anything that I'm looking at here with some of his K props. But one guy I do like, you look at Michael Soroka and then you look at Jose Ramirez and I know it'll be minus money even at two plus total bases and you can make it potentially like a Cleveland money line plus two total bases but J Ram back to doing J Ram things he had like one blip on the radar season in the last like four or five years but Jose Ramirez just back to being who he normally is it's going to be ridiculous coming out of the gate here he had a slow start to the season for what it's worth 33.3 percent hard hit 334 expected slugging but goes yard on Monday again we're dealing with small small sample sizes I think you're going to get a little bit of a discount because of the slow start to the season and that's well, he just went yard yesterday, so now it's not a slow to start to the season. See how this works? It's a tippy-top thing. Jose Ramirez, one of the best hitters in baseball. Switch hitter, good times. Two-plus total bases against the White Sox. Let's let's lock that one in. Just to make sure you know that isn't a lock, it's a like. But I'm just lock it in because I think it's a good play. Anywho, should always be watching that lean. Something I'm thinking about betting or just is on the outside looking in because there's a lot of baseball games on the card like half unit, quarter unit for a lot of the home run plays like Christian Yelich who goes yard up against the Cincinnati Reds here. Uh, it's a ballpark that's just tailor-made for a guy who is starting to loft the baseball. I'll at least break down the pitchers for you for 2.2 seconds because Mr. Joe Ross, eh. Decent enough stuff thus far. Now, the walks need to come down, but decent enough with the hard hit. Really good with the expected batting average, 133 here now, but just one start, only 73 pitches. Don't want to go completely nuts here. That is for sure. Uh, what, zero barrels thus far? There are good signs. There are bad signs. There are good signs. There are bad signs. Anywho, one of the bad signs you have for Frankie Montas, because he's been awesome to this far, is just a 20% K rate. Now, he was up at 26.6% in 2021. Last season, he got hurt, so 26 pitches. We're not going to look at that whatsoever. But in 2022, 23.4%. There are two starts, just a 20% K rate, but a 2.28 expected ERA. These are good things, good things. But we were getting like plus 600 and better on Mr. Christian Yelich, and we're going to get it again in a ballpark, Great American Small Park. That is a home run friendly little palace. Ellie De La Cruz finally went one, two for his first two in a, a double dong situation against Milwaukee. But we got the Yelich bomb, 733 expected slugging in 20 batted ball events, 55% hard hit percentage. And I highlighted it yesterday. I'll highlight it again. I love seeing the launch come up for him. 11.8 degree launch angle. That is massive improvement if it can maintain. And some people don't look at stuff like that and they don't think it matters. It is so unbelievably imperative. Look at his averages over the last three seasons. 2.8, 3.6, 3.5. If you don't launch it, you're not getting optimal abilities to take advantage of your hard hit. So the hard hit has been there. 
48.6, 50.1 his last two seasons, 55% thus far through 123 pitches he's faced this year, four barrels already. Let me just tell you, if this loft maintains, Yelich is going to be a 40 home run hitter. Yeah, you heard me, 40 home run hitter. He has speed. If the back is healthy for him, this is somebody that you want to be invested in just about every damn day until the books catch up. Friends, it's Masters Week. I'm going to have an article over on stochastic.com. You can check out in the DFS streets. I'm going to have my favorite bets put into that one, but we got an unbelievable deal at the link below right now. One dollar, one dollar using promo code MASTERS at that link below gets you your first week of OS premium again for a dollar. That's just silliness. Again, you want to jump into the premium discord. You want to have some golf bets. You want to have some NBA bets. You want to have some MLB bets. I'm going to be providing them all as well as uh, Eitan Chander, Isaiah Suaros, uh, everybody you know and love here on the Odd Chopper channel, Ben Raza, of course. Check out the link below. Come check it out. Hey, a dollar? It's less than 20 cents to be able to have OS premium for the weekend. You don't even have to bet anything on the top of the board, although the positive EV tool, it has been back tested for profitability. We promise and assure you that over any long sample size, the thing is proven in every single sport that it has the tools to help make you money. So if you want to come learn how to use those tools, if you want to talk bets, and hey, if you just want to get my betting card every single day to double check your work, you have an opportunity, friends, down at the link below using promo code MASTERS. Only if you're 21 and if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. AJ Yuck. <laughs> yeah, sorry. AJ Puck on the mound going up against the New York Yankees and Carlos Rodon, a southpaw. Hasn't exactly been good himself, but AJ Puck really really rough first two outings here as a starter it's been tough to watch again freaking infinity whip infinity expected era we've had infinity walks 25.7 percent walk rate just a 17.1 percent k rate things gotta get better better it has to but aj puck he has the kind of stuff with the four seamer sweeper combo sinker ball as well comes along a little bit but primarily four seamer sweeper i think he's gonna be okay as he a game as he accumulates super sample size he, he needs i feel like i could say that for a lot of people in major league baseball right now but he has much better stuff than has been on display but you can't walk guys like this if you're going to be a starter and eat up five six innings you can get away with it here you can get away with it there but you can't get away with it on a day in day out basis and aj puck friends this is definitely somebody that you want to keep your eye on because eventually once he starts to rein it in we're going to see some serious serious stuff from him but uh, not feeling any of his K props, not really feeling anything against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, where if he's leaving dudes on base, there's a lot of power. 352 X Woba and what 301 expected slugging's been good thus far. He isn't giving a, up a ton of hard hit, but he's going to be more of a fly ball pitcher, and that worries me against this lineup. As for Rodon on the other side, friends, mm, yeah, I think we're going to be backing him. We're going to be backing Carlos Rodon and these Yankees overall. Now, AJ Puck, again, I don't think he's bad. I just think it's going to take him a little bit while to get equated to the major league level or starting at the major league level. That is, we saw him be one of the best relievers in baseball Southpaw there, but the Carlos Rodon side of things, a 542 expected slugging. It's not good. A 15.6% K rate thus far in two starts, not ideal. And a 2.79 ERA next to a 6.76 expected ERA. Not what you're looking for, but Miami has just been absolutely truly horrific from the plate in every single sense of the word in fact you just group it by wrc plus against lefties and eh, not as bad as you might expect the spots but they got a st louis outing where they made things work and well <clears throat> you take that one outing out of the equation 50 wrc plus overall 40 without that one outing so i'm just saying wrc plus 176 plate attempts against lefties they have been Third worst in baseball, just behind, get this, the White Sox and the freaking Nationals. That's the kind of quality that Miami's rolling out on a day-to-day -day basis against lefties. Give me the run line. Hopefully, Puck can walk some more dudes. We'll eventually be backing him. I, I think it's coming sooner rather than later. George Kirby, Chris Bassett, you should know by now. George Kirby, not my favorite pitcher, especially when you start getting him on the road in some of these spots. I just wish we were getting a little bit better number here to try to go and back the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, it hasn't been as good here for Bassett, but George Kirby, we'll start on that side of things. George Kirby, really good in terms of limiting walks. That is his superpower. 4.3% walk rate over two starts this season. It's actually worse than his 2.3% walk rate, and it's already freaking elite, beyond elite, blonde, beyond elite. 
I don't know why I couldn't say beyond, but a 2.37 expected ERA through the two starts has me a little freaked out because he's been good in that department as well. I'm just saying relative to the prices that you have to pay to back George Kirby, I've never been a huge fan, but if he's limiting the hard contact, which he's done thus far this season, and he's able to keep those walk, the walk rate's not going to go anywhere. He's just that kind of a guy. Location, location, location. It's like real estate, but only a 21.3% uh, K rate here. And you got some big boppers in the Toronto lineup that can definitely make you pay $50 every day. My mom told me not to back Chris Bassett either though. Why? 45.5% hard hit percentage, 407X Woba thus far. 18.8% K rate. Again, the K rate has come down ever so slightly since his 2021 season. His high mark of 25% to 22.45 in 2022, 2023. 18.8% now thus far. 7.06 expected ERA. So I want runs, I tell you. Over eight. Over eight. Again, we're jumping on this key number where it's 4-4. Four, four. You're going you're gonna to catch that one unless the game ends and they postpone it for a later date. And then we got bigger fish to fry because something bad probably happened. But over eight friends, half unit, easy play. The Mets, the Mets. They are making my life miserable here at the moment. Let me just double check back in on this score because I just saw, yep, five, five, bottom seven. Come on, Atlanta. Come on. The three run shot was just so egregious there. Bad pitch by Charlie Morton. Again, it's early in the season. You're going to make mistakes there, but Brandon Nimmo first of the season there to get the three run homer. Oh, it was not an enjoyable experience, but it's got to be what it is to watch Adrian Hauser roll out for your baseball team when you had last season, Justin Verlander, Jacob DeCrom. Feels like forever ago as like Julio Tehran and now Adrian Hauser taking the mound against the Atlanta Braves. They're just ridiculous too. You look at this right-handed lineup or the, the against right-handed pitching that is 167 WRC plus and 216 plate appearances by far, by far. The best, best mark in baseball now through, eh, it's like a week and a half. So we don't want to go completely nuts. But Atlanta, they're going to stay up there because that lineup is absurd. Nearly a one OPS. Uh, that's a one dot zero 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 OPS. Sorry to just speak binary to you there, but whatever. Reynaldo Ropez. Reynaldo Ropez. I don't know why I said that like the Kim Jong-il character from Tim, Team America, but just in that mood, I guess. 31.3% hard hit percentage, 275x Woba now in that first start. Strikeout stuff I was curious about because I didn't know if it was going to just show up immediately. 29.9% K rate in 2023. Again, 1,200 plus pitches, 29.9% K rate. What was the major difference though, friends? What was the major difference? Hmm, what was it? Oh yeah, he was a bullpen arm. So it's going to take some type of regression here, but I still see the velocity looks pretty darn good. 98 miles per hour. That's some pretty good fastball velo from last season. Now it's going to be down as a starter. It's not going to reach those high marks. Again, you have to sustain it for longer. But I said Ronaldo Lopez is kind of the X factor of this Atlanta rotation. Uh, rotation, rotation, rotation. <laughs> it's like the real estate joke, but it's a callback and it's a... I think the K stuff's going to show up. I think you want to be early to the party. I think six plus Ks. Seems like an aggressive number. I, I want to see more, but I want to see the opening number here. He did go six innings, five strikeouts in that first outing. So like four seamer sliders, it's really good. The Kansas City money line, and I will say we're in the middle of an absolute galaxy murder fest here. Houston has 10 runs, Texas five in the top of the fifth there. Almost fired that over once you got Framber Valdez, who ended up getting scratched. Didn't get to react to it. It moved to like 10 at close. And I was like, ah, I'll pass it 10. Shouldn't have passed. That's for sure. Would have been a nice little W there by now. George W. It's like a Texas adjacent thing that we could. No, we're not going to bring politics into this. But anywho, friends, you know, he, he was a president. I said that. Anywho, we've got friends. Texas, not on the slate playing Houston. We got Houston going to Kansas City here for this one. Kansas City. This ballpark has been playing up for runs, but purely because it's had some of the better weather. We've had wind blowing out at times. We've had some pretty decent temperatures, whereas it's freaking cold other places, Mr. Bigglesworth. But Christian Javier going to be on the mound here for Houston. Not sure if this is going to be like a renaissance season for him. He had a really good tail end of his postseason. So there's at least that to star highlight look at. And Cole Reagan's on the other side. Well, He's going to be good again, I think. This is absurd. Going up against those, hey, we said Texas gave him up for nothing. Let him go. 2.90 expected ERA thus far in 2024. He had 3.33 last season at over 1,500 pitches. So 
just we're looking at a guy who's much better than you might think. I also think that we could be getting some value here. One, I'm not completely sold on Christian Javier. I want to see a little bit more of it. Two, I think Kansas City, pretty live in the AL Central against my twins. The Guardians, now that they don't have Shane Bieber, who's going to have to have surgery, Tommy John surgery. I mean, this is just awful what we're seeing for some of these injuries. But I think Kansas City, when you're talking about plus 105 in Houston, potentially having to use up a lot of their bullpen here today, purely because, well, it is 10-5, so we could see that. But having uh, Mr. Framber Valdez scratch kind of created a, a need for them to call up an arm. Maybe they bring up somebody else right off the get-go here. But I'm going to pay very close attention to that. But I think it's worth a plus 105 play. I think you might get a better number if you wait, because, again, Houston will be more publicly backed against Kansas City at this point in time. Maybe. Again, maybe. But I just like the idea of a team that I'm projecting to be close to a coin flip here at plus 105 and getting the five cents of value. It's pretty straightforward to me. Also, Kansas City, they didn't have to do jack diddly squat. They got to sit on their hands and watch baseball on Monday. So fresh bullpen for them. Maybe not the same for Houston. Wish I had fired that ladder. The Dodgers taking on the Twins. Tyler Glass now. Louis Varland. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Shohei Otani. Double, double homer. Right off the bat. First three freaking plate appearances. Got a little bit of the home run play. I said it ended up being something to attach some spots, but like, <sighs> how tilting? How tilting? How tilting? Anyway, we might be running that back here in this spot because again, uh, Tyler Glass. Now you should know this is kind of a surprising number to me. This money line at minus one seventy, the run line pretty tight inside of it. Again, phrasing. But anyway, we've got like, what, 54 cent difference that you're looking at here, a 56 cent difference that you're looking at, depending on what book you're looking at, purely because, well, ninth inning bump for the best offense in baseball road team. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for them to punish whomever is on the other side of this one. And my twins, well, they're rolling out a guy that I don't like a whole lot. Louis Varlin, 43% hard hit percentage in that first start, just a 19% K rate. You go back to last season, 4.58 expected ERA and over a thousand pitch samples. So it's decent and up there. 5.96 expected ERA in this first start. He's just not a major league quality pitcher. I might have to actually double dip and fire up a little bit something with the Dodgers side of this one. Not that that'll surprise anybody. Pretty square play. But Shohei Otani, Total Bases Ladder Part 2, the sequel. Can I actually pull the trigger this time as opposed to being a coward, the likes of which the world's never seen before? Yeah, I should probably bet the Total Bases. Home run was nice, though. You know what's always nice? Bet MGM. At the link below, friends, first bet safety net up to $1,500 over at BetMGM. If you want to help yourself out, if you have DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, all the other great sports books, awesome, splendid, you should. But you want to be shopping for the best lines every single day. That is just a given if you want to be profitable at this long term. And a lot of the best lines for K-props, a lot of the best lines for run lines exist over at BetMGM. So friends, if you're looking to add another sports book, why not a spot? It's going to give you up to $1,500 in bonus bets back into your account if your first bet loses. And if it wins, keep those profits. So look at a nice plus 300, plus 400 long shot in any sport that you want, friends. Take that big stab. Get that positive EV that you get when you take a bigger shot with that bet safety net existing there. Don't bet any favorites. Don't bet any massive favorites whatsoever. Find yourself some plus money somewhere. And if you need help for that, jump into Odd Chopper. Uh, jump into that premium Discord and I'll help you out. But check out BetMGM at the link below, friends. Only for 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back we go to the picks. I do like something here. This is two quality pitchers. Again, this is the best arm that St. Louis has. Bar none. Uh, must have missed him during the week last week. Somehow, some way. But Sonny Gray, I miss him. I miss him so. This is his first start. That would have been why. But my sheet had him updated for his 2023 numbers, which, again, are pretty damn good with my twins. 3.66 expected ERA. 2.79 actual ERA. 39.2% hard percentage. A 24.3%. K-rate. He was incredible last year. He was awesome. I hate it here. I will remember. Anyway, Zach Wheeler on the other side is electric too. 223 X Woba, 31.3% K rate. We saw a lot of him here. I think you're looking at a great opportunity to get yourself a little bit of an under. Yeah, seven and a half. This is too big of a number. Again, it should be seven. 
I mean, 4-3, you're going to cash that ticket here. Give me the under of 7.5 for two arms that I just absolutely love. There's really not a whole lot else to add. 1.91 expected ERA. I'll add that from the first two starts for Zach Wheeler. Seems pretty good. Seems like a great spot to target. We're going to get really quickly through these two because I don't really have any interest. We don't have any number on the board here for, we're assuming Alex Wood going to be on the mound for the Oakland Athletics. They could do a number of things. Nathan Evaldi, I think, is definitely going to be who we end up seeing rolled out there for Texas. So I'll at least feature him a little bit more as we break this one down. Nathan Evaldi, fast forward, just fastball, 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 splitter, cutter, but mainly fastball. That's always the thing to be paying attention for him. The velocity is there right from the get-go here again, 95 miles per hour. It's actually down a little bit from last season's numbers uh, as you're going through the pitch mix. Did I have that written correctly? I hope I have that written correctly. Is that right? 95.8 in that first start, 95. So it's actually exactly where it's supposed to be. I was right. There's nothing to do over here, friends. Nothing whatsoever. I have Oakland plus one and a half, though, purely because if it is wood, there's at least some hope there. And then also Texas. They're in the middle of this gauntlet game going on with Houston. One of the things that's undervalued is people don't react to what's going on when these lines come out the night before. But this line is not available for a damn reason because Texas, their bullpen is getting worked right now. 10-5, they are down. Lots more coming here. Andrew Heaney, thanks. Good job. Thanks for coming. Have a nice day. Another one that I think is pretty quick. Normally, I would have a lot of interest in trying to target, you know, some overs, or, you know, some run lines. Cal Quantrill, I absolutely hate. But Merrill Kelly, I love him. You know, he and Zach Allen, two of my dudes. Wish I could have done something with this game as well yesterday. Wish there was something to mine out there. But Mer Merrill Kelly, friends, 25% K rate uh, so far this season. It's good. 32.4% uh, hard hit percentage. That's awesome. Awesome. Everything's good. But he's 35 years of age, and despite seeing some 40-year-olds, the Max Scherzers of the world, some other guys that are really starting to... TJ Stewart goes yard. Are you kidding me? What a loser. Actually, no, he did a good thing, but like, I hate the Mets. <sighs> anyway, 35 years of age here. Last season, a 4.13 expected ERA, so he got by because of better case stuff. 25.9% K rate. The walk rate was even up to a career-high 9.4% walk rate. I'm not sure. What to make of Merrill Kelly going into Coors Field here? I'm going to still lean his side, though, because I just hate Merrill. Or I hate, not Merrill Kelly. I hate Cal Quantrill more than just about anything. This guy pitched with the Guardians forever. I would always target him. And it would always seem like he would find ways to just randomly burn me from time to time, despite a 5.85 expected ERA. In fact, that's kind of been the story of his major league career. Somehow outperforming all of the data. Going back to 2020, check this out. 4.24 expected ERA, but a 2.25 ERA. 4.01 in 2021, 2.89 ERA in 2021, 4.31 expected ERA in 2022, 3.38 actual ERA in 2022. It is like I'm taking crazy pills. He somehow finds ways to be effective, and I hate it. But he won't be effective at altitude. I think Arizona absolutely murders them, but I'm not going to bet this square of a play. I can't take this at minus 118. I really should, though. Just a little bit worried about my boy Merrill Kelly on the other side. We have three games to go in the evening window. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we talk Tampa and Los Angeles. Aaron Savale taking on Patrick Sandoval. Patrick Sandoval, a nice bounce back outing in certain ways. We'll get to him here in a second. Let's start on the other side of this one with Aaron Savale. He's kind of been the, the go-to guy for Tampa Bay. They no longer have glass now. They've been, well, it's now for a long time here, but first couple starts look awesome for Aaron Savale. Everything across the board, 1.50 ERA, 1.86 expected ERA. Going back to being down with a bad self, 3.69 expected ERA in 2023. That looked pretty good next to a 23% K rate. Just, they find ways to turn these dudes into dudes. Tampa Bay, whether it was sticky tack stuff once upon a time, because that was definitely a thing. Tyler Glass, now he's talked about it. He's been very honest about it. But like, they've always found ways to be ahead of the game. They've always found ways to have a competitive advantage by taking pitchers with mixes that they like or pitches that they liked and making them the elite version of themselves. Now, he's never going to overwhelm you with velocity. He's not that guy, 92, 93 miles per hour. But the curveball coming off of the cutter is pretty darn devastating. Has a sinker four-seamer that he can mix in a little bit as well, although a lot lower usage on those specific pitches. Think on the other side of this one, though, friends. I don't think Aaron Savali is necessarily going to get away with some of this against Angels hitters. Now, 
Again, the curveball. If he's setting himself up and getting ahead and counts, awesome. But this ballpark is pretty conducive for runs. And I think Patrick Sandoval do for a little bit of negative regression. Negative regression. Although that first outing was so, so bad that the second outing, like nothing could actually go worse than it. But you go through the specific game log for it. He got to face the Marlins. That's useful, right? Still gave up two earned to them. Still just walking dudes had two walks in each of those first two outings, which isn't egregious by any means. I'm not going to say that. But what I'm saying is that I don't like a 191 whip to start off the season. I don't like a 273 expected batting average. And I don't like the fact that on the other side, you got a lot of righties that can create some damage there, despite the fact that we took that less on Tyler Anderson, two and a half earned runs. I do think Patrick Sandoval isn't going to be as good because he doesn't induce the same soft contact as routinely as what Anderson has in previous seasons. Now, maybe that changes. Maybe we see this 30.4% hard hit percentage he's had so far. It's actually been okay. 35.1% last season, not bad, but not quite Anderson's quality. And Tampa Bay has those righties. I think the over of eight and a half is worth a small little play. Plus, the Angels' bullpen is the thing that keeps on giving all the time. We know that by now. So that's always a little bit of a plus. I just want to highlight two batters hitting the ball very, very hard in a terrible ballpark, of course, here in San Francisco. Uh, the pitchers, Josiah Gray, he's been awful so far this season. Kyle Harrison hasn't exactly been good in the strikeout stuff. I wish it were there. 19.6% K rate. Again, I don't know why these AAA guys with huge K rates just not really finding it, especially when he pitched in the West Coast League. Like the PCL, the Pacific Coast League. I bring it up all the time. It is like playing baseball on the moon sometimes. You go to Reno, you go to Albuquerque, you go to these spots, six, seven, eight thousand feet above sea level, and it's a disaster to pitch. Kyle Harrison had strikeout stuff there. Why is it not translating? I don't know. He's 22 years of age. There's still time. But the expected ERA, 4.55 last season, 5.07 this season. Uh, not great, not great. But Washington, going to be one of the better spots for a lefty pitcher all season long. Now, they don't strike out against lefties. We brought that up a ton last year. And that's been the same this season so far. 19.4% K rate, 129 plate appearances. But second work WRC plus 47 there in that department. Not sure what to make of it in a ballpark like this. But I do think we want to be looking at targeting Josiah Gray in some capacity. Now, Matt Chapman, maybe you get a little bit of like an inflated number here, some nice plus money, but Matt Chapman has been murdering the baseball. That's not the surprising one because he did that last season. I think his Babbitt due for some positive regression as well. That's batted average on batted balls in play. There we go. First time I did that this season, but it's on the sheet. It looks good. But Matt Chapman, 61.3% hard hit percentage. That's not the surprising one. Patrick, I'll take a Bailey's. How about Patrick Bailey here, friends? Jeez. 64.7% hard hit percentage. They parted ways with some catchers. I mean, we got some different. Uh, Bart's not there anymore. They have Tom Murphy, which again, I, I kind of like him against lefties once upon a time. But Patrick Bailey, friends, 64.7% uh, hard hit percentage, 311 expected batting average. Now, he's not lofting it all that much, but again, Josiah Gray giving up crazy hard contact, 50% hard hit, 503 expected slugging. I think maybe a little total basis parlay makes a little sense here patrick bailey again i'm playing pretty light here in the early going of the mlb season so kind of feeling a couple of these out don't want to pay a ton of egregious vig or anything looking to try to back them here but patrick bailey and matt chapman two righties and well bailey switch hitter so that, that'll be useful so i guess there's that but the right on right one want to specifically pay attention to what exactly is going on with matt chapman's number that might be the one that throws me off and I have absolutely nothing for you here from the Cubs side. They don't have an announced pitcher. Joe Musgrove on the other side. We do have that one. So that's cool. I'll at least break him down because it's the end of the program then. 436 ex Woba so far. Not good. 368 expected batting average. Even worse. Everything's been bad. Not ideal. Terrible. We've got three starts from him because he pitched in the Soul Series. And wouldn't you know it, none of it's been good. So cool. He gets to face a Cubs offense that has a lot of ammunition fresh out. The we can't sing that one. We're going to end the program now. Yeah. Chicago money line, lean, get out of here. Goodbye. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Lings, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on Tuesday slate. Hopefully the audio visual. I mean, switch the cameras once we started that. But either way, hopefully it was better for you guys this time around. That's for sure. Uh, felt pretty good about some of the analysis. Obviously, you're not going to be perfect in the early going of the season. Really pick your spots. Uh, we're going to pick our locks very, very carefully here going forward. Again, the Mets just screwing me over here. 
the most square play of all time. Of course, it does not come to fruition. The books win that one. Not for long, friends. Not for long. Until next time. Thank you, producer Jacob. Uh, check out NBA Lindy's as well. A million basketball games to talk through. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets and NBA streets on Tuesday.